Can you hear me, Mike? Okay, I can't hear you. Hold on. What should I do here? Um, I think, are you muted, Mike? Is Sean, you're muted? Yeah, there we go. There, oh, we, go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Hey, and man. Like to, yeah, how you doing today? And I'd like to welcome everyone to today's show, Truth. You know, today's guest, we have Dr. Paul Henning, PhD, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army. Thank you for your service, by the way. Yes, sir. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate Always. it, man. Appreciate and, that. And so, you know, to kind of give everyone a, a background, what led into you joining the military into the Army? Yeah, so for me, it was <clears throat> it was 9-11. That's, that's what did it. Uh, that's what definitely put me over the, over the decision point for sure. I, I thought about it earlier than that in, in when I was younger. And uh, <clears throat> I was a little bit older, actually. I was in my 20s um, when I came in, late 20s. So a little bit older, but I went to school first. I did, um, did my undergrad, did grad school. I was in grad school. When 9-11 happened and, and that's what did it for me i just um at that point i was like i need to i need to go serve my country so yeah that was it here we are 20 20 some years later <laughs> thank you for that decision and that's you know it kind of seems like a blink of an eye when you think about it you know but there's so much that goes into that and so how long i guess during your service have you always been committed to the general health of one individual? Because we, we all know that, you know, good physical health promotes good mental health and everything else as well, too. So has that always been, you know, something you always had in your mind to maintain, you know, your own physicality to promote, you know, well-being and uh, fitness for others as well, too? Or Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Michael. Yes, sir. Um, so for me, I loved it. I got into health and fitness when I was a, a young, young boy. Um it all started playing football. I played football in like Pee Wee, you know, run around. With a little... <laughs> and then I remember getting these sand weights when I was like 10 years old. You know, I don't know if you remember those things way back. <laughs> but uh, I, they were... I had one of them Hulk Hogan workout kids back in the day. Yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, I just loved it. I loved it. Uh, I mean, I loved, first of all, it was just getting getting stronger for football. But from there, it, it grew. And um, as a teenager, I just remember just my – my love of reading about it, like, of course, back then it was just like the magazines. And I just, I mean, I, I would read about that. I was like, oh, I want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Who didn't want to, though, right? So, I mean, but I just love the, I love the, um, the, the studying and the academic side of it. When that's what, from that point, that's what propelled me into going to undergrad school. I, did, I mean, all my degrees are through in the field of exercise uh, physiology, exercise science, kinesiology. So yeah, it all started back then, and it's just uh, it's good. It's still going strong. Um, you know, 25, 30 years later, almost. Yeah, so was so. the doc was the doctor side pre military or hand in hand, and it just kind of start civilian sector and kind of build on. You know, while you were in military, or how did the whole you know the yeah. PhD and everything else come into play? Yeah, good. Um, so I was uh, I had no plans to do a PhD. And so the going back to what we just started with the 9-11 got me into the military. I was doing a master's degree at the time and <clears throat> I got offered, like I had no idea. Like, I was pretty naive about what was out there in the military, what they can do, uh, specialties, et cetera. And um, I had no idea I could use my skill set, what I learned in college and actually come in the army and do and do that and help soldiers, war fighters with their health and performance. So, um, what, what happened at 9-11, I was finished. I had like a semester and more of my master's degree. And I got offered a two-year scholarship in the Army ROTC program at Florida State University where I was. And that's when I went into my PhD program because I, you know, what was I going to do? I had to do something else. And uh, so, yeah, that's what started. But I, went, I didn't finish it at all at one point. I went, I, I after my two years of ROTC, I had to go on active duty. So, I was halfway done with my PhD. I went to four, four years. I did. Uh, went to Fort Hood, Texas, and I was, I was a platoon leader as a medical service corps officer for four years. Went to Iraq twice with the First Cavalry Division, but always wanted to come back and finish my degree 
because I knew that would give me that specialty which I'm in now and allow me to really work kind of um, hand in hand with warfighter health and performance. Hey Mike, sorry, sorry, I lost your audio. Sorry about that. Sure oh, no, it's, it's a, no, it's okay. So, oh, there so you how go. long? There yeah, you how long into? I, I can't. I keep muting myself. And I want to go clear my throat. I don't want to do that in the microphone. But uh, sorry about that. But, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Man. How how long into your service was like the enhancement of the war fire as far as far as the uh, actual physicality goes? I mean, were you always able to promote? You know the physical fitness and the well-being or was that like something that you specifically wanted to target in your service and like you know ready men and women of the you know the services yeah so i always so what i do now as a business is kind of like separate from from what like the army side right but before i even got into my business of like helping people in general um with their health and fitness uh, i always won like when i was going through my Doctor, I knew I had to finish that up so I could come to this place up here in Natick, Massachusetts, um, called the Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine, and they do warfighter health and performance. They do research, bio, biomedical research to enhance warfighter health and performance in all environments. So we look at anything from uh, military physical uh, performance, uh, nutrition, um, and then also how do they perform under stressors of uh, heat, cold, and altitude, of course, right? So. We, as we know, we, we don't fight in the perfect environment. We got to go. We got to go in pretty, um, you know, austere environments. A lot that has to do with fatigue as well, probably too. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So as we know, you know, you know, going to altitude, for example, that causes a lot of fatigue. You know, you could take a very physically fit person, and if they're not ready, you know, for altitude, they could, you know, kind of like, kind of get, get they could get relieve out of the fight because it could be that detrimental for them so there's ways to kind of like get there and that's I mean that's just an example of the research we do at this place but i always there, wanted to, yeah go ahead just real quick i mean because i wanted to touch base while you're actually you know targeting this one area because you know i know a lot of individuals that are you know in the mma you know myself like doing the training and everything else too but so like a lot of the trainers will go out to like Colorado to run in the mountains because of that altitude it helps with the breathing and like ready your body for that but yeah. and we may get into this later in the broadcast but is there something or a way of kind of mimicking an environment where we can ready ourselves despite altitude to kind of ready ourselves for okay I lost your connection here uh, Bear with us one moment. Hello? I can hear you. We just can't see you right now. have visibility of you right now there you go you're muted right now uh, there <laughs> you, gotta we go. love awesome. te tech you gotta love technology uh, yes. yes sir it yeah, was going now, good okay here we go yeah so no what i was asking you is okay so just as <clears throat> excuse me we'll take ourselves into environments that have the high altitudes that kind of mimic that yeah. where when we're doing our training that breathing and everything else can be learned to be controlled. Is there a way in environments that necess not necessarily has that altitude, but are there ways that we can mimic that in a training environment to better prepare ourselves for you know such altitudes or anything else like that? Yeah, sure. Um, there, there are. There's different things that athletes use to. Um, there's 
I mean, we, we have hyperbaric chambers, uh, altitude chambers, and that's what we do research in. There's not a lot. There's not, I mean, that's not something you have access to, like anybody, <laughs> right. but right. So, uh, but we have that at the place where I used to work. Um, I'm, I'm no longer there now, but that's an example where we could do research and take people to altitude without actually being at altitude. And then there's there's things now with um, uh, like there's these t tents that I think that are on um, on the market for athletes. I've heard, I've never really seen one up close, but there's tents that you basically you go inside it and it. And essentially what it does, when we go to altitude, we have a lower um, percentage, of, percentage of oxygen in the air compared to at sea level. And that's what causes these detrimental effects on uh, your athletic ability or physical performance. Um, there's other kind of pathophysiological things that can happen, like altitude, high altitude edema in your lungs and your, your brain. Um, and that's why it's really important to acclimate. But this is a couple examples of things you can do. Awesome. Yep. And, and then, so how long has Operation Transformation been, you know, I know you're constructing everything else and you provide different services for the viewers. That's one of the reasons why I want to kind of bring you on here to give, yeah. expose what it is you're providing so other individuals can take advantage of you know, proven methods that provide proven results and make it permanent. You know, so how long has that Operation Transformation been in the making and how long have you been launching that? Know, what's the yeah. next steps to try to get you to where you know we are assisting individuals to better themselves physically which will also promote their mental health as well yeah so i um so how long has it been up so it's a group so essentially it's um uh my my business is just named after me right now and but i had a, a group i started in facebook where and I, I, I just so I, I just got it all typed up now. So everything's going to be scrolling across the bottom. So all the viewers, the group that Dr. Henning's speaking about right now, you'll be able to see his, it's scrolling across right now. The join us Facebook group right there. So if you access that, or you can just look up, if you go into the search bar in Facebook and you look up Oper Operation Transformation, you'll see the group for Dr. Paul Henning, PhD. You know, and I suggest everyone at home to you know join that group so you can take advantage of the different benefits that you know Dr. Henning is covering with us now. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Appreciate that. So, yeah, it's been uh, the answer to your question. It's been uh, it's been quite a few years, like at least about five years. Um, I've had the group where I just it's a, a free group where I give out information, tips. I have some trainings in there. Um, the name, of course, and has that military kind of ring to it. Operation, right? And then the whole transformation part, like this is where I like to like, of course, a lot of people, we all want to look better and feel better. People, I mean, who, uh, there's so many people that want to, I want to lose weight, you know? Okay. But what, let's look at deeper. What, why do you want to lose weight? And what, how are you going to feel once you start losing weight, losing, losing that body fat, getting fit, feeling good about yourself? There's so much more to it. And that's why I like that operation transformation, because this is all. You know, it's a, it's a full scale, right? Holistic operation. It's just like you mentioned, Michael, it's mental too. So people, I love when I see people that I work with, not only change their health. I mean, I'm talking like become, they're on the borderline of, you know, type two diabetes and almost a full diabetic. Whereas they change all that, you know, and they're feeling better. They're looking better. But then they tell me how much their confidence has increased um you know their self-esteem and just just you know their their relationships too with their spouse their loved ones their kids whatever it is now that to me is what a real true transformation is you know it's just not like hey i want to lose 20 pounds right there's so much more that goes into it and and the mental side of it is huge that transformation is so much more of an impactful word rather than just diet you know right. you might go on a diet you know and Another thing I want to go over with you, too, is how much of because you have individuals that seem forced to do their transformations or their diets it's because, you know, they may have went to a doctor and the doctor said, hey, look, you know, if you continue to eat this way, if you don't exercise, you know, you're just going to be on a decline. And again, the whole mental side of it. So how much yeah. how much of the dedication part of it has to be the mental side? in order for the, the permanent transformation is you know, you disclosed to actually take place. So I, 
it has to be a, definitely there has to be a mental connection, a psychological connection to for somebody to kind of to kind of do the things that's necessary day in and day out, week by week, but month by month to get where they want to go. And that's that's um, the huge thing. And that's where a lot of people kind of, you know, don't link it up um, because, you know, depending on where somebody's at, you know, it could um, it could take them three months, six months, nine months, a year or longer. Uh, but yes, I've felt I've had I've had people that came to me and they were at that that point where you just described Michael about you know their doctors basically told them like you need to do something or, or you know you're gonna probably die a lot earlier in life and uh, that's kind of a what I call a snap point and um, it's different for any, everybody that could be one for somebody another one could be you know you just like your your kids told you that you know daddy daddy why why don't you play with us and you're because you're come home from work and you're like you just want to sit down on the couch you know that's a snap point it could be like you just saw yourself in the mirror and you just can't stand it anymore you know so what i'm getting at is that usually there, if you can tie it to some type of deep psychological reason on why you want to change that's gonna i i found michael that that really helps people it really helps people carry you know, through this day after day, because, you know, we all have life comes at us, you know, there's different things. And, you know, if you have, you know, you have kids or you have jobs, we have this and that, we have commitments. And it all sometimes like some days aren't better than others. And like some people are just like, oh, this is much too harder. This is, and I can't do it. You know, you get that a lot. So if you can tie it up to something, you know, like, like that, really deep down psychologically, it's going to really help you. And then so, what are some methods or suggestions from you, doctor, that, because a lot of times the misconstruction that a lot of people get, a lot of individuals when they go into exercise or wanting to make that transformation is some individuals, they don't go in with real knowledge. You know, they think they can go do a few push-ups, you know, run a couple miles that the results are going to be immediate. You know, and right. you, and, you and I both know that results, you know, it can take, you know, 30 days, months. But I, I know that and another thing, too, that if, you know, individuals <clears throat> at home want to follow, you know, Dr. Henning and kind of review his own transformation, which was pretty phenomenal. What, what was that, about a year's transformation that you showed from beginning to end on your own transformation? Was that a, was that a year or what was that time, time frame on that? Oh, that was, um, you know what, I think I think that was actually one of my clients you might be talking about. Oh, was it a client? I think it was. I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought, it, was, I thought it was your own transformation, but okay. Yeah. So that yeah. so I'm always I working on that. mine too. Well, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I seen that because I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a year's time frame. I must have like yeah. misread, misread the. Uh, and I apologize no, for that. But, no, that's all right. That's all right. No, that was a that was a law enforcement officer from Florida that did that. Um, yeah, pretty remarkable. But uh, the, and, and I know that I know you're going to say it too that. You know, it's all going to be on the individual on how fast. And, and plus, now, one of the questions I want to ask you, too, is with you, like with you being a doctor, knowing the, the science behind it, you know, how much does an individual's metabolism, you know, and like you said, as far as like diabetics, a lot of times they're not burning the sugars or the, you know, the uh, carbs or anything else mm -hmm. as, you know, the next individual. So is that something that in your planning of someone's transformation, are those all the different factors that you take into consideration when you're laying out, you know, the regimen that they're about to do their, their fitness training or is it a kind of a one size fits all? Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, not, so it's not a one size fits all, I, I would say, because there's all different, you know, people like to do eat differently a little bit and they have different diet preferences, whatever. So to answer your question, yeah, I think uh, there Everybody, I mean, human physiology is the same across the board, first of all. And and that's the thing. It's like, um, you know, it's it's not like uh, uh, there's something that comes out. And I, I mean, we've, we always have this fad that comes out every year or whatever it is. And people jump on it and they expect a huge result and they might lose it. And this happens all the time. They lose the 10 or 15 pounds, but they gain it back because what they've gone on isn't <coughs> – it's not good for their metabolism long term because it, it kind of like what well, we can get into that the science behind it what's going on um but 
the big thing is this thing's not sustainable. They can't maintain this like very low calorie diet or low carb. And they just, bottom line is, so yeah, everybody needs it. I mean, we have, we have muscle on our bodies. We have fat on our bodies and we have bone and some other, you know, tissues. So the key is, you know, the increase your metabolic rate. Everybody has to like, I always teach that your metabolism is, there's kind of three main things that influence it. And skeletal muscle is the biggest. That's the biggest influencer. So number one, I always get people like that work with me. Like we need to get on something that's going to build some lean tissue, build some strength, build your functionality. And not only that, we're going to do all that thing. The side effect of all that is that you're actually going to look a lot better. You're going to look better in the mirror and you look better in your clothes. And then, then we start teaching nutrition and how it really works. And, you know, you don't have to shun carbs. You could have carbs. But it's all about knowing how to eat them and when and the right kinds because carbs, there could be, you know, there's categories of carbs and they, you know, <coughs> rice, is, rice is different than a bunch of vegetables, that, that, for example. So, and then honestly, Michael, it's just, um, I mean, we, we can work through different diet preferences. Like, for example, if somebody's a uh, vegetarian or whatever, that's fine. You know, that's just okay. We're just, we're just going to have to work on getting a little bit more protein for you and making sure you get there compared to somebody that's eating that would eat like uh, meat. And then it's just really about learning lifestyle, like learning how to build systems and habits in place and setting up your environment. So this makes it fun, and enjoyable and something that you could do the rest of your life. And then, so, so is, is, yeah. is that one of the things that you cover with everyone too, to kind of, you know, lay that precedent as far as, because there are different carbs, you know, a lot of like, because like red meats may have different carbs than that of rice or broccoli or the greens and things like that. Right. Or, so is that, is that something that plays importance to, or like you said, I mean, you know, everybody can kind of eat differently and things like that and still maintain, but is there an yeah. importance in balancing out that diet? You know, cause I, I know that you also make some posts you know, as far as like good meals that individuals can eat to maintain and get the proper proteins, get the proper carbs and everything else too. So, right. Right. Yeah. So first of all, I think for anything to, for people to get results and, you know, keep this lifestyle the rest of their lives, including myself, you gotta, you gotta enjoy it and you gotta really like what you're doing, your food, especially, right. Um, because that's the biggest thing. If you get on some type of diet and you don't like like it, or you could only do it for a week or two, you're, that's it. I mean, that's it. That's all you're gonna do. You're gonna revert back to your old habits. So you got it's gotta be delicious and enjoyable, and it's also gotta be something that's gonna take your your body composition goals to where you want them to be, and then also help you along with your transformation. So, yes, I, I first teach people like, okay, this is the food you can eat. And this is how you make it. And I, I, you know, I have, I have resources for that. And then they see like, Oh my gosh, like look at all these different recipes I can choose from. So the first thing they know, like, Oh, I could actually eat good, enjoy food. And that's huge. That's a huge psychological barrier because so many people come in and they have this mindset because only because they, the, all, all their past and what they've tried. And that's all they know. Like they have this mindset, like what kind of diet is this? You know, and they think like, okay, what, what kind of meal plan are you going to send me? And um, should I should I cut off my should I cut off all my carbs? Can I have any carbs? Like these are questions I get before I even like talk like tell them anything, because they have all these preconceived notions from their past. So once they learn about okay, this is how I can eat. These are the foods I can enjoy. Then I start teaching them the fundamentals of like okay, how do protein work? What are the best pr protein sources? How do carbs really work? Um, you know, what's what's low energy and what's high energy carbs and when can you eat them? How does that work? How does that affect your metabolism? You know, how, what are the best fats to use and what are the healthy, you know, the healthy essential fatty acids? So they learn the mechanics about it and then they, they kind of learn like, OK, this is what goes into these recipes I'm eating now and this is how I should eat. And then we start structuring meals. You know, what goes in a meal? And then also then how do we structure our day, you know, either around your workouts, how you eat, or if it's a day you don't work out, then how do you eat? So it all kind of builds upon itself. Awesome. And so 
another thing I wanted to ask you is because there's always, you know, I hear some are good, some are bad, but, you know, how relevant are supplements as far as, like, people taking, like, tablets or pills or even some of the shakes? I mean, are supplements good to do for body transformations, or is it strictly eating the foods that have those vitamins? Because I've, I've always, you know, I myself, I believe in the eating of the foods and consuming the natural ways of consuming the actual vitamins, nutrients, and things like that. You know, some swear by the supplements and everything else. Is there any kind of suggesting points of what you really feel after all of your studies and I mean, your plethora yeah. of knowledge in this field? That's why yeah. I wanted to kind of ask you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a common question. Everybody wants to know that, um, too. Like, they always ask about supplements. And now here's the thing. Supplements aren't going to replace a bad diet, number one. That's why I always tell people is, you know, if you're if you don't have a good solid nutrition plan down, essentially the supplements are pretty much going to waste for the most part. And I mean, I've I have had people think that that's all they need, and they just need to take their supplements, their their you know whatever shake or whatever they're doing, and be like, I don't need to eat really eat anymore. <laughs> and it's just not you know, that's not how our bodies are designed at all. So yes, whole nutritious food is absolutely the the baseline. It's the fundamental building block. And then supplements come in um, depending on what you want. And so, one, for example, I mean, I I use protein, whey protein, or a veg veg pro protein, and it's just because um, sometimes people need a little bit more protein. I like to use it also around my workouts, you know, with that with that carb source to help the recovery process. Um, so that's just one example. Um, some people like pre-workout drinks that help them get kind of fired up for a workout. <coughs> so, I mean, if you like it, you, you can use that. If you don't, you don't have to use it. And then, you know, there's other things out there, of course, um, that, that kind of assist around. A lot of them are assist around the workout. And then there's like, you know, then you have creatine monohydrate, which is, you know, that's just a, a very well-researched supplement that's, been around for a long time and it, and it works it, it works if you want uh to increase you know strength and muscle and improve like your recoverability recovery ability when you're doing like short events like that like weight, weightlifting or sprinting and then of course yeah i i think i recommend like a a multi-purpose you know vitamin mineral too just to kind of cover the baselines i mean yeah, if you're eating nutritious whole food, you're 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 doing really well. I mean, if you got fruits and vegetables in your diet, that kind of thing. But you know that never hurts. But the bottom line is, supplements they're gonna they're gonna help a little bit if you have that baseline down of whole nutritious food, and you're kind of using the supplements effectively. You know that that's kind of like how I answer that question for people. You know, there's another question I get from a lot of or concerns rather from a lot of individuals the very fact that you know because they see these you know superstars you know working out that are eating you know three course meals of like you know fish plus the red meat and everything else and people are like Shit, i can never afford i can never afford to even you know be where i want to be i mean so i mean it's yeah. there are affordable meals out there i mean so somebody doesn't have to like necessarily break the bank to get the food to replenish the you know the torn muscle i mean you know what i mean to do the rebuild and everything else but i mean right at a realistic level i mean how how much does grocery let's just say as far as the foods and things like that that individuals get because i mean right salads and the vegetables I mean, you can get them fairly cheap and everything too but you know how important is it for the meats that you know essentially could be Know, the bigger portion of that is that going to be an everyday thing would that just be like three times a week to where they want to kind of feed their body after a workout or right is that where supplements come into play yeah good question so yeah i get that i get that quite a bit too like people will say you know it's too expensive to eat healthy <laughs> and so, yeah it's, it's, organic. I mean, it's like, <laughs> double the price yeah no and that's a, exactly right and and that's the thing you don't have to go choose all organic food at all i mean could, no not at all so and the the truth is when you really break it down for people and i mean here's the thing if you if you go out and buy healthy food at the store and it doesn't have to be organic you know 
I mean, you don't have to get the the steaks all the time either. Well, I'll, I'll kind of touch on protein here in a second. But if you prep a little bit, know how some prep skills and get, kind of get ready for your week, not only are you going to be on track all week long, but it's going to save you a lot of money because if you don't, I mean, what do people do if they don't have food with them when they're at work? They kind of buy something, at, you know, at the deli or, or whatever is there. And it's usually something that it's not going to really be the best choice for them. And they're spending like, you know, I don't know, maybe ten dollars. So let's call that on average, right? Give or take. And if they do that five days a week, that's fifty a week, and that's two hundred a month, just for eating out at lunch. So, I mean, then I, and, you know, when you tell somebody that, and you actually do the math on this, and you you calculate what you spent on groceries and healthy food, but prepping your food food compared to that, it's a no brainer, Michael. You know, and um. Yeah, so I mean, then there's like, okay, if you don't have the grocery budget to get steaks, you don't have to get steaks and fish, and eat that every day, or you know, or shrimp, you know, which are good sources of protein, but they're expensive, especially the the uh, expensive steaks, right? I mean, you could get a leaner cut, I mean, a, a lower price steak that maybe it's not flaming young, but you don't need this flaming young every every day either. And that's the thing here. I mean, I, I, if somebody has that issue, let's like, okay, let's let's shoot for like, um, let's shoot for some dairy. Let's shoot for some eggs. Let's only do red meat, like one, you know, two times a week or whatever. If that only fits your budget, and it's fine, you can work around it. There's other ways to get your protein source. And then, of course, yeah, if you if you want to have a, spend the money on a supplement for protein, for whatever reason, maybe it's more um, you know easy for you to get it in and consume. Then that that's a choice too, but you know it's not 100. percent You know you have to. Well, another thing yeah. that I always point out to individuals as well too is, and that's why I love the combination of you know both of your fields. You know, the, the doctor yeah. side of it, actually knowing the physiology and just the biomedics behind it all, and then also the military because that's one of the examples that I used to individuals is how fit a lot of military personnel are, and they're not eating the the steaks five times a week and you know you know that's not their diet no, you know? a lot of no, people no, get this no. through thinking they're eating like champions in the military and it's like but it's the there, there are ways of eating where you can still maintain that physicality and you know get there keep it there yeah yeah absolutely we're not eating like that um i, I could be the first one to raise my hand and tell you that <laughs> um especially if you're out in the field you're not eating like that uh so yeah there's other ways there's other ways to do it there's like there's cheaper options that are you know just just as good and you know of course uh, i mean one of the things that, that they learn is i teach is the you know what i call a complete protein source or it's actually called like a first class protein and essentially what it means michael is that this is a source of protein that has all those essential amino acids so amino acids are the building blocks of protein and that's what really kind of helps our recovery from a workout helps build build the muscle tissue recover it from from the micro damage we do during a workout um, especially a weightlifting so the amino acids is what makes it up and a complete source of protein is like for example a chicken a steak a fish eggs they're all examples of complete sources meaning that they have all the essential amino acids in them so we, we want to kind of aim for that and it doesn't have, like I said, like it doesn't have to be a steak all the time, or it doesn't even have to be chicken all the time, um, depending on your budget, you know. And then, of course, to where the supplements could come into play because there are a lot of amino acid supplements. But how, yeah, how true are supplements when it comes to amino acids opposed to you know the chickens, the meats, the fish? Yeah. So, uh, so when you talk supplements, you're talking like the just the supplements that have like the amino acids in them, like branch chain amino acids. Correct. Right. That just has three amino acids. <clears throat> yeah. So I always tell, I think it's like, if you want to go with supplement, go with like a, like a, a protein, like a quality protein, like whey protein. Or if you don't like dairy, go for a good quality veg protein. It just is made up of a, like a pea or rice protein extract. And they're actually now with food science, they're actually very good as far as they're actually the, all the amino, essential amino acids are in these too. But if you let, if you're not opposed to dairy, then like a whey protein, compared to taking just individual amino acids, because well, first of all, I mean, if you only take a individual amino acids or a branch chain amino acids, which is three, it's only three amino acids in a branch chain amino acids: it's leucine, isoleucine, and valine. 
So that again, it's not complete, right? You only have three of them there. So whereas whereas the pre, the whey protein or the veg protein is going to be more of the complete source. It has all those amino acids in it. So I, that's what I would recommend. And then, so do you go over, so when you bring somebody on as far as the, you know, ready them for the transformation that's about to take place, you know, and them knowing that, because I know one of your main topics is making it permanent, you know, because there's no reason on making the transformation if it's not something that is going to be permanent. So is that something right. that you go over someone's current lifestyle, current eating habits? Is that something that's important for you to actually plan which regimen or, you know, what really is going to make their transformation? So how important is them being open about their current activity, if they really exercise, if this is foreign to them, if this is new, what kind of eating habits, right. you know, all that jargon coming in, how important is all of that into you structuring what works? Or is it that, hey, you're just going to do this and move forward regardless of how you eat, this is going to work? Or how does that work? Right. Right, right, right. So um, the first thing I, I do is I, I take people through like an onboarding when they first start up and it kind of like I get a, I first get a really good history of them. Um, health history plus kind of the history of what they've done in the past as far as like diets they've tried. Have they ever done any type of structured progressive resistance training in the past? Do they even know what that is? Um, a lot of people don't. And that's fine. That's that's fine. It's just so uh, it's called a metabot. It's kind of a metabot classification, but it's not, you know, it's not invasive. You know, we don't have to take blood or anything like that, but it's just, they, they answer these questions truthfully. And it really gives me a really good history of like, okay, where are they at right now? What that, what, I mean, what do they need to learn and what they, what they, what have they done already? And this really gives me an idea like, okay, where does this person need to start compared to somebody else that maybe, might have like a lot of background in, in, in you know, resistance training, whatever. Now, they're, they're, they would be a little bit different of a starting point. So that <clears throat> coming in there, that uh, it's kind of like more than it's more, it's more, um, you know, streamlined to the individualized to the person because when they go through this like kind of onboarding procedure, you know, I'm not just, I'm just, I'm not giving a blanket thing, one, one you know, one shot for everybody kind of thing where like, don't matter what, but no, it's more geared toward what do you need right now to, to kind of get you on the right track and start making improvements. And um, that's where we learn. And then, then the education process comes in. And, and that's vital, you know, and I'm, and that's one of the reasons why I have a passion. That's why I'm glad and I'm, I'm so grateful that you've allowed us the time today to come on yeah. the show and talk about this Absolutely. because, you know, in my, in my medical profession, you know, I run genetic testing. Okay. okay. So, so we run cardiovascular genetic tests. We run the diabetic genetic testing where, you know, a lot of individuals, you know, cause I, I can't say I'm big pharma, you know, and individuals go into their doctor and just because, you know, their blood sugar may be a certain thing or they got stress, which everybody has stress, you know, they're diagnosed a lot of times, I believe, wrongfully as diabetic or having high blood pressure to where there are certain exercises like what you provide. And there's ways that they can change that to where otherwise they wouldn't be diabetic. They wouldn't have heart disease. So that's the whole point on the genetic right. testing side is, hey, are you really genetically predisposed to these conditions? Or is it because of your eating habits, your lack of exercise and everything else? And that's why what you do is so vital because, you know, half of the – and I'm going to – this is an opinion to all the viewers, but I'm willing to say yeah. that half of the individuals that have been diagnosed as diabetic – or high blood pressure could control that with diet such as yourself, the transformation such as yourself, to where they become, because nobody questions the doctors. You know, I'm mm -hmm. sure you know this. You know, it's that right. you go in there and they say, oh, well, hey, you know what's wrong with you, Dr. Henning, is that, you know, right. you just got diabetes. Here you go, here's a script, go get this and you'll be fine. Instead of right. asking you, well, hey, well, how do you eat and everything else? Right. And that's why I like to just direct individuals, you know, to yourself. To where they really can get onto that regimen because i've seen diabetics become non-diabetic because it really can't happen and that's why it's important what you do and right to you and everything about yeah that. yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent michael um i mean we we know there's no there's no shadow of a doubt that lifestyle factors is the um that's the reason behind the plague of uh what, what, what we're seeing in our country and in other countries too you know, well, it's, uh, you, you said it right in our country. I mean, because I mean, and you and I both know this. I mean, 
I don't want to down the, I mean, this is the greatest country on the planet, but, you know, we are gluttons in our eating habits <laughs> and everything else. I mean, it's the, yeah. that whole, that whole movie that supersized me, there was so much truth in that to where we want more for no reason. It's that, you know, we don't, right. and then all these different big companies putting the different fillers and things like that inside their different meals to kind of lure you back in there. Aquafina water putting salt in there so you get thirsty and just keep drinking more and more of their water. You know, there's just so many different gimmicks in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're taking that health, you know, road is the way to go. I mean, it's just right, and you, and you feel better and stuff too. I mean, it's just again, yes. that, that good physical health promotes that good mental health. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, it, essentially, it, it's a battle out there, right? I mean, we're we're fighting like food, the food science industry. We're fighting because they're making all these tasty, delicious food and it's, a, it's so freely available. And, you know, it, it's a fight because people like, they're like, yeah, this is easy. This tastes good. And then it kind of like, there's this, there's a, this addiction behind it over time. And, you know, I, I mean, no, nobody gets to where they are either, you know, gaining weight or, or looking great overnight, right. Or e either a week or a month or even a year. I mean, this is, this is decisions that are made, daily for you know months years that kind of like get to a point where like oh crap i gotta do something or i'm gonna die and like you know your blood pressure is through the roof or you're type 2 diabetic and you're gonna like you know whatever lose a leg soon or a, a, a blow, go blind and, and i mean unfortunately that's what happens to some people before before they really hit that snap point um yeah you know but, and, and like with the physiology 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 side of everything physiology there you go yeah. so and in looking at the breakdown of you know every individual you know how much does that play in because it, it has to be important like the whole, i know you that's your whole background is because you collaborate everything together to make it that science-based proven method that that transformation is in fact going to be permanent so with with that being said you know how much of that goes into so the physiology side it's like with skittles every skittle is the same flavor but the scent smell you know triggers that for you to taste that so with you having these different food companies making the things that are taking delicious that are just you know putting our bodies on a steady decline if not a steep decline you know yeah. are there different methods that you know you see that whether here in the near future and even in the distant future that the health foods can use such tricks as that to where scent actually makes us taste and you know associate something with something that is completely foreign to what we're actually consuming do you see the health industry you know using those same antics to try to get people in better shape because it's the same things that you know these big food yeah. companies are doing now is yeah. tricking people into tasting something delicious so that they can ruin their bodies I mean, right. to see a benefit of the health industry, you know, using those antics as well. Right, right, right. What's uh, yeah, I know, right? The health industry needs to have some tactics under their sleeves to make us eat some more bro broccoli, right? Right. Let me play some broccoli. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's there. I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't. I this is what I find working with people. There, I mean, to answer your question, there's no, there's no trickery that I, that I know of or is coming out yet that could put, like, for, I mean, to go to the other side, be like, I don't know, let's take, um, you know, Cool Ranch Doritos, right? I mean, they, they taste good. I'll, I'll be the first to admit, they taste delicious, and that they're, you know, that those additives and stuff they put on them, you know, the, with the food science industry, it's like, yeah, when you're, that hits your taste buds on your tongue. You know, you're just like, I think it actually lights up brain, you know, there's parts of your brain that light up and you want more of it. Well, it doesn't happen when you eat broccoli, right? Um, but this is this is what I find. I think um, the key, going back to what I said earlier, is if you can make healthy food, whole food, fruits, vegetables, meats, you know, legumes, whatever, whole grains, you know, make that really, really be pleasing to the eye when you see it on a plate and also taste delicious and you can do this when you learn the skills that that's the thing that really i think is like the the kind of 
you know, what the food industry is doing on the, what the bad food type stuff and what we can do on our side to really get people to eat healthier. And, and a lot of it's all going to be coming down to individuals. I mean, like nobody's like going to cook for cook for them every single night. You know, they got to learn this skill set. But once they see like, I think what really gets people over the edge is um, once they start doing that for a little bit and they really like the food and then they start. The first thing that happens to people, Michael, is like usually after about one to two weeks, it's kind of like they say, hey, I feel better. My, my energy, uh, my energy levels are increasing. And that's what happens. We, you're, you're, the way these, this healthy food, your know, whole foods you, uh, is doing for your body is that you're, you're basically your, your enzymes are working more efficiently, right? And your, your mental awareness is getting better already. And you're just feeling better. And then, then usually, the, you know, the weight will start coming off. You'll start feeling better in your clothes. You know, you're feeling stronger. But going back, the food is what, you know, if you can make it taste good and it's pleasing to the eye, and it's starting to make you, you know, that you got that feedback loop where it's also not only that it's tasting good, but it's also making you feel good and look good. That's the whole loop there that really ties it in. And you're like, okay, you know, I don't need to go back to that other stuff anymore. This is this is what really works. And then, so how many smokers? And this I, I feel this is an important question. So how many smokers come your way? And because you know, yeah. they're giving up the smoking. Is going to be important to that and, and the reason i want to touch on this because you know a lot of smokers don't even, aren't even aware of it is that you know when you smoke cigarettes that tar sits on your tongue so the tastes of foods really aren't there and so a lot of okay. times when individuals quit smoking foods taste differently and they just start indulging as they're trying to do something so the individuals that like gain weight because they quit smoking is there i mean the working out i guess could replace the actual because a lot of times mm -hmm. they say it's a actual habit of like the, the action of cigarette to lips and all that other stuff too, but you know, a yeah. psychological part of it, but you know, do you have many individuals that it affects their diet that way because of the way that foods taste differently now that they quit smoking opposed to when they were smoking or yeah, it is the, is there a specific um, setup for that? Or is that just something that again is going to be up to, you know, the person trying to make the transformation? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, up front, us, I, I haven't really, I don't think I've in the in the recent few uh, recent past worked with uh, many smokers at all. I mean, and, but I do know what you're like what you're talking about. Um, I mean, my, I have my mom and dad were smokers, and my mom quit, and it's that whole thing where yeah, I think I think also if I I think nicotine's kind of an appetite suppressant too, if I'm not mistaken, right? So when you get off the nicotine. It is that thing then like they're used to, like they start eating and they replace that, that cigarette. And then they don't have the appetite suppressant anymore because the nicotine has gone. So yeah, that all kind of, and then they, on top of that, they don't really know how to eat right. And they don't, they're not really exercising. So then next thing you hear like, oh, I put on, since I stopped smoking, I put on 20 pounds and um, yeah, but it all comes back to, you know, of course, yeah, yeah. Don't smoke or get, if you do, you know, definitely recommend you know, quitting. Um, but it all comes back to, again, go back to the fundamentals when you, when you wait, what's, what, what do we need to do to start getting your metabolism on track? So you start burning more calories and then, you know, how do we eat and teach in that process? So it, it kind of all falls back to the same process, whether you're a smoker or not. Okay. And then, so yeah. now with your, with your regimen, is it a, do it, does anybody going into it experience, I'm not going to say shock, but I mean, a sense of shock because of, you know, how foreign a lot of that change, whether it be with the foods that they're eating or with them actually having to have the physicality in there. So it, is it a gradual lead in into the, the overall, or do you just kind of adapt it to the individual and their commitment? And, yeah. Yeah. Good. Great question. It's definitely uh, something that, yeah, every individual is different and um they're i guess like i was saying as far as somebody might have been eating a certain way uh for their whole life you know 20 30 years now they were raised to eat like this they were raised to eat you know you know whatever steak and potatoes for dinner every single night whatever it is it doesn't matter but i mean that's what it is we're all we're all brought up a certain way where we were taught how to eat kind of from our parents and then we just kind of built those habits. 
so it's all it's about breaking them and then building new ones so there's a there's actually a lesson that i teach it's called the habit loop and kind of how to recognize like the cue the habit cue the routine they go in and then the reward and then how to break that cycle and implement something new uh so that means yeah everybody's different and you got to kind of work with that individual and, and take it some people you got to go a lot slower than others which is fine and then there's a another thing is that you have to um the people that don't have the background with exercise especially structured uh, progressive resistance training which is the, actually the key is that at the backbone of a good exercise program a lot of people don't have the the background with that and it's as, as a teaching process where you know i you know you, you teach them with video I, with videos of course if it's going to be long distance like this and they they learn correct form without any weight first and then they start doing a little bit of a overload with with weight maybe just a bar get that technique down first make sure the range of motion is good biomechanics are good and then we progress from there but one of the biggest hurdles michael is um getting the family on board if, if somebody comes to me with a family it's right right because like, you know, the husband or the wife the spouse whatever and the kids are used to eating and stuff uh, you know, start eating, start eating whatever they have for dinner for years, and then all of a sudden, just one person wants to get on a, a program now and change. But the others might not might, might not be ready, or they're, they're like, "Hey, what happened to our steak and potatoes?" <laughs> or whatever it is, whatever it is, right? Um, but here's the thing: there's ways to introduce the family to to this kind of eating. And I found too, like. Uh, the family, if the family enjoys it, then then there's like happiness all around. So, yeah, that is key. I mean, you know, finding something that makes it worth it for everyone. You know, so exactly. I mean, and, and there there are going to be ways that you know you can feed your kid where they're still going. I mean, there are enjoyable foods. You know, like we were talking about earlier about how do we get the the good for your foods that taste good. You know, and I think that's probably like what it will let into like. All of a sudden, the cranberries and everything else getting, and the nuts getting added into the salads. And the, hey, let's put some chicken into the salads to actually, you know, kind of make it more savory or enticing, I guess. You know, so I mean, but there are ways of getting kids to eat healthy as well, too. I mean, sure. Like yogurts and everything. You no, know, yogurts are delicious, you know, but yeah. and again, it's the so speaking yeah. of yogurts, you know, how, how does, you know, someone being, let's say, like lactose intolerant, you know, play into that? I mean, do you go, I'm sure you do. Yeah. Going over, do you ask individuals like any kind of diagnosis that they've had that may restrict certain portions of the diet in you know their transformation? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, of course, like dietary preferences is, is one of the things they kind of do when they kind of come on onboarded, and they depending, you know, like I said earlier, if they're the maybe they're vegetarian or they just they're, they're lactose intolerant, they can't eat dairy anymore. So that's fine. They just they select that and they. They kind of like here's a here's a list of recipes that they can have that don't have dairy in it, and you know like I mentioned earlier about supplements, you know they can't if they're if they're lactose intolerant then they they wouldn't want to have whey protein because that's made from you know from dairy and they would they would choose the veg pro at that point, right? And is, so, it, is it realistic that someone can really get? I mean, you know, I I don't believe it. I mean, I've studied, I've, I've looked into it, but you know. But you see people swearing that you can get just as much proteins or those amino acids you were talking about earlier yeah. on a vegetarian diet opposed to having at least some red meat or fish in your diet. Yeah. I mean, are you able to maximize protein amino acids on a strictly vegetarian diet? On a vegetarian diet. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know the nuts and stuff like that kind yeah. of to do yeah. with but. Yeah, um, yeah, great, great question. You, you can. It's harder. It's a little bit. You're gonna, you have to, you're gonna have to really work a little bit harder, and you're gonna make sure, you have to make sure you have a, a good selection and combination of things to get that. Going back to the essential amino acids. I mean, if you didn't, you know, the complete sources of, of the animal protein. You know, that's easy, right? You know, but if you're taking veg pro, veg pro, um, vegetarian. You know, if you say you choose, I don't know, um, you know, maybe just beans and uh, black beans and, and some you know, brown rice, right? There's um there's might be a few amino acids that are missing out of that. It does have some. It's, you know, beans are good sources of protein, 
but it's not that complete. So you got you kind of gonna make sure you have a really good selection and variety if you're vegetarian, um, and you're you're gonna have to really, I mean, especially if you're doing a lot of like if you're doing the weightlifting, you want to build muscle. Right, you're gonna have to like you're probably gonna have to resort most likely 100 percent to like taking some type of weight uh, protein like a veg protein to, to, build, to get them just to make sure you have the quantity of protein too. And that's what, that was going to be my next question. I'm glad you just said that. As far as the, you know, because you see the, the weight trainers, you know, people that are trying to build muscle mass and, you know, they're looking for size, opposed to someone that's just trying to get fit, you know, you, they, they call it the, like the runner's body, where, you know, somebody could just be slim, fit, and everything else, too. But, you know, and yeah. that's where, like, the difference is. And that's why I want to kind of bring up about the, the realistic truth behind being able to consume enough proteins and amino acids to kind of get that the bodybuilder type, you know, muscle mass and size where it's the, it's a lot more that you'll have to do on a, if somebody's on a strict vegetarian diet opposed to actually having at least, you know, some yeah. red meats and fish in the diet as well too. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. It can be done, but you're just going to have to really focus on it and, you know, work a little bit harder, so to speak with, the, with your nutrition. Okay. Yeah. That is so, you know, what are the most important aspects? You know, I'm going to kind of, I want you to kind of take off right here now to kind of lead into your whole pitch and kind of like lead in as far as, you know, what you look for or what another individual can look forward to in joining your program. And I have, I have behind me, you know, the group page. I know it's kind of cut off a little bit. I might crop it a little bit more, but, you know, individuals that are looking for that op operation transformation in the Facebook group. This is what you'll see for the image and the backdrops. So you can actually join the group and kind of communicate with, you know, Dr. Henning in regards to making your transformation, everything else like that. So if you, if you want to cover yeah. with us, like, you know, what individuals can look forward to. I mean, I know you cover the eating habits and you know, the transformation. Right. Also, if you want to take off and kind of, you know, give the whole spiel of what individuals need to look forward to, what you're looking for, commitment, everything. <clears throat> yeah. So, well, I'm. What they could expect, and what they should expect, is is a very quality. I think it should be an evidence based, research based program, and not not something based on some some fad or some gimmick or the latest thing that's gonna like give them some quick result, but it's actually gonna kind of um, ruin them in the long term. Yeah, and there's pl there's plenty of there's plenty of those out there. Uh, as we as we know so yeah they'll come i mean they, they can expect um a, a, a program that's gonna well first the mechanics of it um, one program's 12 weeks for me and then there's a different one that's another 12 weeks so i mean somebody could work with me i honestly typically take people on for six months i mean if they only do three months at first and you know that's fine but i find at the very minimum and like i mentioned earlier depending on their where they classify on their metabolic classification that kind of determines how long it's going to take them to get a really good result. So um, that's kind of how it works with me. One program is 12 weeks. Uh, and then it's, it's just laid out fundamentally where like I was kind of alluding to earlier, it's just a week by week. You, you kind of get put on to a program, a course, an education program where you're interacting with me. You get support. Um, you know, any, any type of questions you have while you're going on and you just learn the process, um, foundation, you know, build, you know, workout, where do you start with your workouts? And then where do you start? How do you eat? How do you build that into your lifestyle? How do you, um, build that in, you know, kitchen makeover, um, six secrets of a transformation, you know, you know, on and on fast, delicious nutrition. I'm just naming off things that they learn along the process. And, but another thing too, is like accountability. So you'll get to you'll get to see a person that's coming through gets to kind of keep track of their compliance, where they are week by week, uh, what they've been doing with their meals, how many of those are kind of like kind of like compliant meals, and it really gives them that feedback to be like, okay, this is where I was on week one, I was I was fifty five percent. All right, let's week two, let's try to get sixty percent. You know, it's not about going from zero to one hundred miles per hour right out of the gate, you know, like I said, this is like you mentioned earlier, Michael, this is lifestyle change. And a lot of people have been doing certain things for, you know, 20 years and it takes some time to, to, 
to rebuild that and break some habits and start implementing new ones. So, and that's fine. That's what it's designed to do. It's a step-by-step -step program. So yeah, it's it, like I said, it's evidence-based. It's going to lay out the foundation. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do for a total body transformation and what the, what the, well, avoid a lot of the mistakes that people make it's going to show you exactly what they are and how to avoid them and uh, of course you could expect the support from me to be there you know every step of the way while you're, while you're going through it and i love how you mentioned accountability as well too because you know a lot of individuals say hey this ain't working for me well were you in fact doing step by step or did you take step one skip two or three when it came to the eating habits and did three you know, or did yeah. step four, you know what I mean? Or, hey, I, I worked out, I didn't eat what you suggested I eat, but, you know, now all of a sudden I did this. And, you know, that accountability is huge when it comes to making that transformation. You know, how much dedication you're going to have to it. And, you know, you yeah. can use the word sacrifice if you want to, but, you know, is right. it really a sacrifice if the proximate end is, you know, your whole transformation and it being permanent? You know? So that's not really sacrifice. That's you know, doing your due diligence. So. Right, right, exactly. And that's the thing. I mean, um, and the, what we all want the, a, a permanent solution and something that's going to be enjoyable and you can do the rest of your life. And uh, that's what it's all about. And that's the thing. I, I, got, I mean, that's what I want. That's the only way I'll be able to do anything. And and you can do it. You can have that. Once you learn the fundamentals, you learn the skill sets um, and it's enjoyable. You could actually incorporate your family into it. You don't have to alienate yourself. And that's what I think. You know, I mean, I mean, our health is important. It really is. Though. I mean, there's a lot of other things that are important in life, but if we don't have our health, man, it affects a lot, every other area. Let's face it, right? I mean, quality of life is huge. So I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of it. I'm a huge believer. And um, I think everybody deserves the, the correct information because I, I see too many people going down the wrong roads, unfortunately. Right. Yeah, well, it is, and it's huge, too, I mean, especially with mental health, because then, you know, people not feeling good about themselves, you know, they're not yeah. confident in themselves, and it just takes people down a negative, negative road. You see it with, you know, military, you know, law enforcement, first responders, you know, civilian sector in general, you know, is that if we don't have a good physical health, you know, it's going to play some role, whether it's us not, you know, us being fatigued halfway through the day, you know, just dragging into work late. We're not getting proper sleep. We're not getting proper exercise. It, it plays yep. everything in the mind, and it all starts with physical health. Yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to convey that to so many individuals to where, hey, you know, if you're not feeling good mentally, do a couple of push ups, or just go take a walk, or take a jog, do something to, you know, because it'll release that serotonin and the endorphins in our brain to where we can have that sense of joy at least to kind of fix that mental health aspect. Of it. I'm not going to say that it's the cure for some mental disorders, but in the same sense, it can eliminate stress and it can eliminate a lot of what individuals do carry into mental health. Exactly. Tearing them down. So. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we know we know it helps with um, mental health too, and you know, like, you know, it could help people with depression. It could help out. You know, it helps your outlook. Um, it helps your sleep. You know, and all that stuff. So yes, I mean, it's a uh, yeah. It's, it's crucial for all, for all of us. I mean, we're. We're, human, the human body is meant to, meant to move, you know, it's meant to be active. And, you know, of course, we're like I said earlier, we're battling it. We're battling, you know, food industry. We're battling technology now where it's so, you know, essentially like, you know, we, we're all sitting now pretty, for the most part. And, uh, and so, you know, everything's done with tech. And um, so that's that's a fight. You know, that's where we have to devote that. And that, that's another thing. So many people have this misconception where they need, uh, I, I can't have time to go to gym for two hours a day. You don't need to. If you could, if you could literally give 3% of your week to physical activity, not even that And sometimes, you know, 3% of your week, you're going to get great results. You really will if you know what you're doing and you know and how it to seems so it. minuscule to the overall picture, too. Man, it's, well, you get. it's nothing, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's not asking much for your quality of life, you know, and and health yeah so and then have, have you ever thought about doing i'm not gonna i don't want people to take it the wrong way when i say this but it is beneficial especially when it's for the quality of life for individuals but you know do you ever run certain research and like because i know you do i'm sure you still study on different new advancements and everything else especially with your role on both sectors 
you know, but do you ever have individuals or ask individuals that, hey, would you be willing to, you know, kind of try out this new system that I'm developing? You know, because, I mean, that, that would be huge in you being able to expand your empire in, in the sense of, you know, providing that well-being for so many individuals. Yeah, um, no, I haven't. I mean, done official research with, with it yet. Uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, I, I've kind of teach people, I guess, uh, anecdotally, and I've uh, seen how it affects some, um, you know, of course, too, without actually going through the entire program. Uh, just teaching, you know, whether it just be my my spouse, my wife, whatever, it's, and, and you can see that firsthand. And of course, my kids too, as they grow older. I'm going to teach them these fundamentals and, uh, but yeah, uh, I haven't done the, the, the research though, the, to bring people in officially. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, it's nice too, because it's like knowing that, you know, your program and stuff like that, that way, you know, we get you patented and everything else too on certain, you know, how, how's the old phrase go? You can't patent, the process, but you can patent certain like structures of it and like names of it and all that other good stuff too. But, you know, without research, you know, and the, the testings, you know, which, you know, everybody that's going through your program and the transformations made is, you know, self-evident. Right. You know, having a different study groups, let's just say, as far as the, well, hey, you know, we took these group of individuals and in that were, you know, 100 plus pounds overweight, you know, they were eating bad and things like this, the transformation. And, you know, test group one, test group two, they were already kind of fit. They were looking at through muscle mass and, you know what I mean? Just kind of having those things to see what, what kind of works. That way you can kind of break down knowing which regimen is best for, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do know the proven, I mean, the, the, the system that I, I, I were, um, I've done a lot of work with a guy that's kind of developed this, um, he has a PhD too, uh, and you know, nutri nutrition, biochemistry. Very smart guy, and this this system has been has been you know, not researched. We don't. I'm not going to call it official research, but it's been been done. And there's been probably I think 60, 70 thousand people that have gone through this, and they've all they've all made from all walks of life, male, female, younger and older, and they've all made um, you know tremendous transformations. So. Which every one of yours is scientifically proven as well, too, and the science behind it alone. That that, that research was done before they started. You know, yeah, I mean, it just being scientifically proven proves right. Else, but just putting it into effect, I still think that you know one of the key aspects to making it successful is what you said earlier in regards to the accountability and you know somebody really being dedicated to that. And you know, you brought up a, a point earlier that I didn't really think about is how the family as a whole that structure plays into somebody's growth and sure. the, the finality of it all is yes, that sir. are they going to start becoming lackadaisical because you know old billy don't want to eat the broccoli like everybody else is eating right like that right. You know, so. yeah and that that's one of the things i mean if you, if you don't have a your if your partner is not on board or is kind of sabotaging your efforts that's a that's a real life problem and here's an example let's say you're like your your spouse likes to drink a lot of uh, you know alcohol know whatever it is um that's not going to help you it's not going to help you I'll, I'll, i mean i what i like to do i like to tell people right up in front and honest with that them, causes diabetes yeah right it causes me it causes weight gain you know it causes it actually affects like uh and we don't need to get into the details but it affects your ability to grow muscle too i mean so uh, bottom line it's not it's not going to be good for your body transformation but anyway, that's just an example, and, I, and these are examples that I've actually dealt with. I mean, real-world problems that, like, uh, you know, a spouse that wants to get fit but is not supported by her other. And that's one of the, one of the big questions I asked right in the beginning, is because I know that's going to be a deal breaker. It's going to be a big problem down the road if if you, if the spouse isn't on board or the partner or whatever. So yeah, yeah, good point, Michael. Well, I'm glad you bring this up as well, too, because, you know, it's the, as people are reaching out to you, individuals reach out to you, you know, it is important to know what they're looking forward to. And that's a big, big, big plus right there for them to know going in because it's, it's in the discussion, you know, and I, I don't think a lot of families are even really having that discussion about yeah. nutrition for everybody as a whole within that household. But right. it's a very important discussion, you know, like you just said earlier, to where individuals were just 
raised to eat a certain way. You know, steak, potatoes, broccoli. You know, it's like, hey, this is what it is. You know, how many families have actually been bred where, you know, they get the different portioned meals every meal or whatever the case was? Or was it just that everybody in the household just, you know, runs the fridge and the stove whenever they feel time? Or is it the ones eating out? So it, right. I believe right. that's a vital topic. I'm glad you just said that to where, you know, we do need to have that discussion more often with everybody in our household. Yeah. Because obviously yeah. it's affecting everybody in that household. Yeah, we can make a decision to eat good yeah. ourselves, but you know, why not make it a benefit of everybody? So Exactly. Yes, exactly, hundred percent. I mean if you could get your you know, if you could get your partner on board and you're both um, you know, like minded in the in the in the goal you're pursuing, which is a it's a great thing because uh, you know, I've all I've all also worked with husbands and wives together and it's it's great because if they're doing it, and then of course, if they have kids, and the kids are going to follow suit, you know, and it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. So, yeah, huge. Right. Awesome. It yes, is. Sir. So, what What are some of the best like suggestions that you have as far as time frames? So, what's your so what's your schedule look like? So, if someone was realistically wanting to set something up to where, which I, I know they can view the the group. Mm -hmm. and be able to look at any kind of past posts and things like that. But if someone was wanting to have, you know, something set up where they had something daily to go into, is it something that they could just go in and just, you know, have that structure already set up basically to, hey, follow this plan here and, you know, everything will progress for you and kind of message you if they have any questions in regards to the regimen you had set up or how does that work? So, so you're, are you talking about somebody that would actually start working with me? Correct. correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, of course, to reach me, I mean, that's my 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 free group, and then of course, um, if you're on a, if you're working with me, then you're with with me, and um, you know, you're kind of doing something different. So, what essentially you're gonna get put on, you're gonna get put on this education course that's gonna um, week by week, as well, week by week, show you exactly what to do. You're gonna be sending things to me for for feedback, for you. I'm gonna be seeing exactly what you're doing. So we'll have that communication, you know, day in, week by week, throughout, and then you're going to be put into a different group that you're going to be working with people that are actually going through the same thing that you are, and you will we'll provide the support and accountability in that group too. So, like I said, it's an education, accountability, and also support all together, which is people just that's what they need. People need support and accountability. Yeah, in group settings, always. You know, it's, it's always a motivation factor as well, too. I mean, it, it, it's a flip of a coin because, you know, sometimes in a group setting, you know, some individuals may get discouraged because they don't feel that they're able to do as much as the other individuals around them. You see it in the gyms, you see it at homes, everything else. But, right. you know, it, it, it does strengthen. I mean, there's always strength in numbers and strength in groups. To where, right. You know, they see that support system and it's just like, hey, you know, you can do this, man. You can push one more, whatever the case was. Yeah. It's, it's always better in groups. So. It is. Yeah, it is. I, I think so, too. I agree 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then are there any other like topics that, you know, whether, you know, your, your group covers what you offer or, you know, suggestions on individuals to kind of get started in, you know, contacting you or what to kind of look forward in their own life as far as, you know, what kind of transformations are possible for them? Yeah. What, was, what, what people can look forward to, if you mean, as far as. Well, gosh, there's multiple examples. I mean, if you're in my group, uh, so I think, um, I mean, if, you, if somebody's like watching this right now, they want to reach out. They're like, I'm ready to change. And, and, you know, maybe they just know me right now. They just never saw me before. <laughs> and they just know what they've seen in the last hour we've been on here, or um, Michael. Uh, and they're ready to go. They're like, oh, I, I trust this guy, which is great. I mean, uh, I'd, be, I'd be grateful for that. So message me, message me on Facebook, um, and and we'll get a conversation started, and we'll we'll take it from there. We'll find out exactly where you are and where, what you've been doing and what your challenges are, et cetera. And we'll we'll start the education process, accountability process, and the support you need. Um, you can expect to uh, really understand exactly how your body works and what's needed to change body composition because that's what we should be doing instead of like focusing on losing weight and looking at well losing the number on the scale that's another thing i, I kind of have to get a mental block over 
And then we're going to we're going to teach your body how to lose body fat and then build lean muscle. Because that's what we want to do. And with that, you're going to lose some weight because then when you drop the body fat, um, but the body composition changes what really matters because that's what's going to give you that functionality, you know, the strength. It's going to look make help you look better in your clothes, better in the mirror, which is then going to increase self confidence. So they can expect um, not only feeling better, looking better, but increased self confidence, increase, you know, attractiveness too, right, to their spouse or their, their loved ones, whatever. So that's that's another, you know, that's another positive side effect to it. So. And yeah. I love the aspect about the education because, you know, the educational part, like, you know, the, especially with technology today, you know, you see yep. some individuals, they'll Google something. Hey, how can I lose 10 pounds per whatever the case is? Yeah. But, uh, you know, you being able to provide the education, you have a support group and, and everybody else that's actually going through the transformation, the accountability to where everything's all in one rather than having to go get the information. Now I have to go find a group that I can actually assert all of this different stuff that I now have in my head or something yes. where it's, you know, everything's all confined in where they can come to your group. They can, you know, learn about what is going to be best suited for them based on, you know, their structure and, you know, find the right group and just move forward and everything else like that. That's why I just love so much what you're doing everything else too. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, um, that's it. I mean, people don't people don't follow things. It, it doesn't build a habit, right? If you look something up on Google, if you if you get a meal plan sent to you, I mean, I mean, what's it do? It's just t- it's telling you what to eat, but it's not teaching you. Exactly. It's been almost fifteen days to develop a habit. You know, yeah, so, right. So some people yeah, like yeah. make it a week. They're like, oh, I can't do this. Right. Exactly. You know, so so yep. Yeah. Once you once you learn and you uh, know what to do, then you could kind of apply it to your own. You could make your own meal plan. Yes, that's sir. it that's the difference and you can you know it doesn't have to be the same food all the time so yeah that's a great point great point all around and is, yeah. is there anything else that you want to talk to outside of the you know the training the education anything else is there any other points that are important to you that you kind of want to discuss while we're on here any other points um well i don't i don't think off the top of my head i think the biggest thing is um now, if you're interested in this and, and you have a loved one or spouse, talk to them. Tell them, tell them like how you feel. That's huge. Don't try to approach this thing by yourself or, or without support, uh, because I think there's strength in numbers, like you said earlier, Michael. Um, especially, especially a lot of strength from, in numbers from from your loved ones that are that are closest to you. That's really effective. So that would be my my advice to people. Uh, and then also just. Um, you know, I, I, I understand. I guess uh, I tell people a lot of times, I, it's not your fault. I understand where you're coming from because they, they come to me after trying, like, diet after diet after diet. And they're, they're like, why is your program different? Um, you know, why? What are you going to give me? Like I mentioned earlier. And I, I get it. Like, uh, I'm talking to people out there watching this right now. I, I mean, I understand. I mean, there is so much stuff out there, nonsense that it's it's uh makes people's head spin and they're confused so 100%. yeah i'm trying to end i'm trying to end that yeah well see and one, well, one of the things though too and you know all of my viewers my my doctor friends you know the internal medicine general medicine family practice you know i would really like to see and i, I would like to see it actually kind of catch on and become the normal now and insurance companies can actually push it that way as well too where so many more doctors practicing family medicine, internal medicine, general medicine would start referring just as if they would refer, you know, somebody that was having back pain, knee pain to a physical therapist. I would yeah. really love to see more doctors start referring their patients over to individuals like yourself or the different fitness groups because, yeah. you know, it, it would eliminate a lot of the, the long term medications people were having to take and just the, the tear downs of the bodies. I mean, it really would It'd be beneficial. Yeah. I mean, because ultimately, you know, the, the ethics that all doctors sign is that they're going to be for the best quality of life for every patient that they see and putting them on pills and without really kind of digging in to find out what would really benefit them truly. I believe that there's so many different violations across the board nationwide, worldwide, by these physicians that are just sitting there just writing scripts and writing scripts, writing scripts without actually diving in to find out what really would improve quality of life in the best manner for every patient that they see. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, yep. One hundred percent. I mean, you're just you know, with the medication. You're just treating the symptom, right? You're not. You're not going into the underlying reason. 
uh, what's going on. So well, a lot of times it's actually causing it as well. That's like individuals that are deemed pre-diabetic, which is a bullshit term, by the way. But yeah, you know, metformin. What it does is see our bodies naturally break down glucose, the sugars, and everything else. Where a diabetic no longer does that. But then again, right. if you change the way that you're eating and everything else, you can redevelop that to where it does happen. But metformin, once it's being prescribed, just like with anything else, our body becomes reliant to where instead of our natural inhibitors and everything else, it's generally to break that down. Our bodies now rely on that metformin or anything, you know, anything else that they may provide us, salt or anything else that they may provide us, you know, to where it, instead of that, like I said before, you can just go through a simple workout regimen, a change of diet, a change of the meal plan, the education yeah. and laws you provide and everything else too. So. Right, right. That's it. That's it. And uh, that's the thing. I mean, you know, I mean, who wants to take the medications the rest of their life too, right? And and that's what ends up happening, unfortunately. Like they not only one, but it's two, three, four, five medications that people are taking at thirty. They get to that point where they're not, you know, they haven't taken care of themselves, and it's just unfortunate, you know. So, yeah, lifestyle. It all comes back to lifestyle, you know. That's it. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all, I'm, I back you 100%. And uh, yeah, I agree. Like, uh, I mean, that referral pro referral process would be great if that ever came to fruition. Because, I mean, bottom line is medical doctors don't get the training on exercise and nutrition in med school. They don't. That's, I a, mean, fact. that's a fact. It, it is. A, yeah, it is a fact. And, and that's fine. They're, they're great at what they do. Um, especially when they, you know, it's, you know, specialists and stuff. And, but they should. They should, they should refer out. And, th and that's why referrals exist. You know, it's just like so, like I was saying before, about medical practice, you know, I deal with genetics. You know, the family the family doctors, the internal medicine, general medicine, they're not molecular biologists. So it's not them to prescribe to a patient to see what's going on with that. So instead of sending a patient over and referring them to a cardiologist, yep. you know, have, have them refer them over, go get this scripted for them to actually have this test done, blah, blah, blah. But it's that, that referral basis that, hey, you know, hey, you know what? John, hey, it's, I know you came in here for this, that, you know, our test of blood sugars and everything else are like this. Now, I'm going to refer you over to, you know, Dr. Dr. Henning. I want you to go through these, like, different program and things like that to see how that helps out and kind of come back, see if your blood sugars and uh, blood pressure and everything else actually get under wraps because a lot of yeah. times, you know, stress, yeah. is, you know, things like that actually cause that high blood pressure or you eliminate stress out of your life, which it's everywhere. But there are ways of dealing with it in a positive manner, such as, you know, working out and trying to better themselves. You know, so. Yep. 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 And we know, I mean, I just worked with an inv individual that uh, lowered it. I mean, he was kind of like almost diabetic, you know, type two diabetes and A1C level was at this point. And then after, you know, working with me, it, it dropped down. And, you know, of course, as we know, like that's what, you know, increase your insulin sensitivity, you know, from resistance exercise and eating, eating healthy. And then now, now your body can use insulin more effectively, um, and that's that's the key to, to reversing that type two diabetes. So instead of taking metformin, so that's it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna try to. Awesome. Do, I'm gonna do my due diligence on that part too, and you know we'll, we'll have a conversation outside of this here on in regard to that and everything as well too. But that's why I kind of push this as far as it can go because I mean you, know, you really are changing people's lives and making that transition permanent. But again. You know, always going to fall on the individual. You know, I don't care what kind of change an individual is trying to make in life. You know, if you yeah. really want that change, and it's going to have to have that accountability, and it's going to have to have that education to know how you can actually better yourself. And that's what's so great about what you provide that structured format where you first educate, then you start getting into what they're about to go into and everything else, too. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah you bet. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. And then, so uh, is there anything else you want to cover before we end this or any kind of information you want me to provide to them as far as contact or anything? Or I got your Facebook group. Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, I think the easiest way, I mean, as far as contact, I think the easiest way to get me is, is by um, on Facebook Messenger. Uh, if you want to reach out, if you want to join the group first, uh, just kind of see some other things and then reach out to me. And just you, know, you got the details right there. Um. I think, yeah, I think that's it as far as contact. And I, 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 well, I just want to say to you, Michael, thank you. I mean, it's, been, it's been awesome. I mean, it's been a great conversation. You you, uh, you definitely know a lot about this, too. And I thank you for what you do. It's been great uh, being on the show here with you. And uh, I really appreciate it. Well, it's one of the things that I do, though. I, mean, I always, 
you know, I watch a lot of people from a distance. A lot of people don't even realize that I follow them, that I follow them as you know, intently as I do. But you know, I'm yeah. always trying to promote those that are improving quality of life, positivity in other people's lives, businesses, awesome. families, and everything else too. So, and I'll, I'll continue to do that. And that's why I want to bring you on here. And I appreciate you allotting us the time. And yeah, thank you yeah. for service to country. Thank you for your service and trying to you know improve quality of life for you know, us in the civilian sector and everything else as well too. Yeah, absolutely, but you you bet 100%. Um, it's been a pleasure for you. Thank you for what you do again. That's a that's a huge um, just taking the time that you do to help you know people that are doing good things uh, and kind of like putting them out there in the world. That's awesome. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you always. Yeah. Yep. Well, look all right. forward to talking to you again. No, we definitely will. You know, stay safe and stay blessed in all, all right. things. And you know, I'll, I'll get more sent over to your group, and I'm, I'm going to send a lot of individuals that I'm watching that came on here. And one of the things, too, for the viewers at home, you know, I do this because I want comments. I want individuals to be able to ask Dr. Henning questions or any of the other guests that I bring on here. You know, I'd like to see more engagement. I know I have so many different viewers that view it and they just watch and they just take the, the education. And, but, you know, sometimes, you know, Dr. Henning, myself, we may not bring up a topic that is important to you or a question that you may have. So I just, you know, implore the different viewers you know as we move on all these different broadcasts ask the questions you know and actually find the answer that you're looking for prior to making decisions and things like that so yeah yeah absolutely um that's another thing too just ask questions that's uh, jump in there and don't don't hesitate because that's how so you about don't get fed <laughs> <laughs> right right so, brother it, again it's been a blessing man stay safe and stay blessed yep. in all things dr henning and you know Keep doing what you're doing. Keep fighting the good fight, and thank you for service in all areas. Yeah, likewise, likewise to you. Stay safe out there, and um, talk soon. And you take care. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Bye bye.